Hi guys, I was on Facebook uh, last week and or this week and I posted um, uh, an image of this book uh, and it says it's called How to Talk So Kids Will Listen and Ki Listen So Kids Will Talk written by Adele Faber and Elaine Maslish and it is an amazing book for anyone that has young children or any children of any age but I think especially if you're uh, new to parenting like I am and you're trying to figure it out it gives you brilliant, brilliant, brilliant pointers and tips about how to talk to kids in a way that's, uh, you know, about, about things that are difficult. Like, so instead of coming in and stepping in and punishing children, you're figuring out ways to uh, talk to them so that you get the results you want without actually making them feel bad about what they've just done. And so um, this is, you know, this is, I think these, the authors are moms, but they've, They've taken, you know, the, the child psychology information and put it down into a layperson's book. And it's full of like, um, you know, it's full of like sort of charts and diagrams and like uh, examples that you can follow to figure out, oh, OK, there's an example. That's definitely what my kids are doing. And then you can just put into practice what they've said. And it's just tons of information. And I'll just give you a quick example of one that I used last night. Um, and it was brilliant. I couldn't believe it. Like this, this stuff really does work. So, so we're having a bit of trouble at the moment. I have a three-year-old and a five-year-old, and they won't go to sleep at night. Right? They're crazy when they go to bed. And you know, I'm, I'm using all sorts of sort of bribes and punishments, and I've resorted to shouting, and I've reluctantly, but you know, sometimes you're like, go to bed, and and uh, I've separated them and put them into different rooms, and none of it's really working. They're still hyper when they go to bed, and they're still bananas in, in, in bed so it's just been very difficult to figure out what to do and you don't want to be shouting at a five-year-old you know um and so so the book said gave me an example of what to do that what you should do is express your anger without actually uh blaming someone individually and so and it gave a perfect example and i was like i'm going to try that and i went upstairs and i could hear them r jumping around upstairs in bed after you know two hours after i told them to go to bed and i went upstairs and there was books all over the floor and what I would normally have said was, for God's sake, you know, who did this? You know, lads, you know, which one of you did this? Why did you do that? And now, and then you go into punishment, right? Like, I'm going to, there's no treats tomorrow and you're not going to get any ice cream or else I'll separate them out, right? And I've been doing this kind of thing and I'm just sick of listening to myself doing it. So now I remembered something from the book and it said, express your anger without blaming anyone, right? And it gave the example and it literally quoted what someone else had said and I said, I stood in the middle of the room and I said, I am really angry when there's books scattered all over the floor. And I paused. And I could see that diff there was a, t a real significant difference in the way that they registered what was happening. Because they weren't being blamed, right? But they did see that I was angry. And I could see it kind of, I could see the cogs turning. They were used to getting blamed. And they didn't get blamed. And then I said, it makes me really frustrated when there's books when people throw books all over the floor and don't tidy them up. And I said it like that, that kind of aggression, you know. So I was being honest. And um, next thing, the five-year-old pipes up and says, it makes me really frustrated too. And then I said, and, I, and then I said, and I get really, it makes me so frustrated. I can, I can barely talk. And then the three-year-old, who is tricky to get, it's hard to get him to do anything. He stood up in his bed and he said, I know, I'll tidy up the books. And then the other fella says, I'll help you tidy up the books. And they got up and they started to pick the books off the floor and tidy them up. And honestly, like, that was like watching a miracle happen because normally I would be pushing, the, I would be pushing them to try and do that. I would say, come on, you've got to tidy up your books now because you made the mess. And it just, they'd just be getting, there'd be more and more and more resistance. And so instead, because I used that technique from the book, they literally just started doing exactly what I wanted them to do. And I walked out of the room and left them doing it. I told them I'd come back in five minutes and, I, and the room will be tidied up. And like I gave them a couple of minutes, I came back and everything was tidied up and they were in bed. And they were really, really pleased with themselves. Like they were, they thought they were fantastic. And I told them they were fantastic. And then... <clears throat> Uh, and then they, you know, it was late, it's late, so we encouraged them. They off, off, they went off to sleep, and I came downstairs and told my wife about it. And, you know, it it was like a miracle. Like it was just unbelievable how easy it was. 
And um, so look, that's that's the book for anyone that has kids. How to talk so you so kids will listen and listen so kids will talk. That's just one example of some of the ideas that that book has, and it is a, an exceptionally good read for anyone that's like tearing their hair out trying to figure out what am I going to do to get this five year old to do the things that I want them to do, like going to sleep or you know not making a complete mess of everything all the time. And so yeah, they figured a few things out. So I, I recommend it. Um, Hope you enjoy that, and if you have any uh, questions about the book or if you have any more queries, give me a shout. I'd be happy to answer them. Take care, guys.